Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mind Map. Today's topic of discussion is High Court. First of all, we will discuss about a short introduction of the topic, constitutional provisions, independence of High Court, jurisdictions and powers of High Court, and lastly, the practice question. So, first of all, let's have a look at its brief introduction. The High Court is the highest judicial court in a state. The institution of High Court originated in India with the enactment of the Indian High Court Act in 1861. Initially, the High Courts were established in Calcutta, Bombay and Madras in 1862. After 1950, a High Court existing in a provision became the highest court of the state. Now moving on to the constitutional provisions. Article 214 to 231 in Part 6 of the Indian Constitution deal with the High Courts. The Parliament has the power to make laws regulating the organization, independence, jurisdiction, powers, procedures and so on of the High Court. Article 214 of the Constitution, there shall be High Court for each state. Article 231 authorized the Parliament to establish a common High Court for two or more states and union territory. The person appointed as a judge of the High Court makes and subscribe an oath before the governor of the state or some person appointed by him for this purpose. A judge of the High Court can be removed from his or her office only on the grounds of proved misbehavior or incapacity. Now let's discuss about appointment of judges of High Court. Every judge of the High Court is appointed by the President after consultation with the Chief Justice of India and Governor of the concerned state. In case of appointment of a judge other than the Chief Justice, the Chief Justice of the High Court concerned is also consulted. In case of Common High Court, the Governors of the concerned states are consulted. Now let's have a look at the qualifications. A person to be qualified for appointment as a judge of a high court must fulfill the following conditions. He or she should be a citizen of India. He or she should have held a judicial office in the territory of India for 10 years. Or he or she should have been an advocate in a high court or two or more such courts in succession for at least 10 years. The constitution does not prescribe a minimum age for appointment as a judge of the high court. Now if we talk about term of office, the constitution does not prescribe any fixed period of service for the judges of the high court after appointment. Although they continue to hold until he or she attains the age of 62 years, he or she resigns from their office by addressing a resignation to the president or he or she vacates their office when appointed as a judge of the Supreme Court or when he or she is transferred to another High Court. Now let's discuss about independence of High Court. The Constitution of India has made various provisions to ensure independence of the High Court such as the appointment of the judges of the High Court is done through a collegium and is immune from the influence of political interference. The security of tenure of the judges of the High Court is ensured by the stringent mechanism of their removal. The salaries, allowances and privileges of the judges of the High Court are determined by the Parliament. The High Court in order to maintain its authority, dignity and power is vested with the power of the contempt. The jurisdiction of the High Court cannot be curtailed by the Parliament or the state legislature. Now let's discuss about jurisdictions and powers of the High Court. Article 225 deals with the powers and jurisdiction of the High Court. It has been conferred with various powers which can be classified into the following categories. Original Jurisdiction, Appellate Jurisdiction, Writ Jurisdiction, Supervisory Jurisdiction and Other Jurisdiction. First is Original Jurisdiction. The original jurisdiction of the High Court refers to the powers to hear certain types of cases in the first instance. The original jurisdiction of the High Court extends to the following matters. Matters of admiralty, will, marriage, divorce, company laws and contempt of court. Disputes relating to the election of members of parliament and state legislature. Matters related to revenue or an act ordered or done in revenue collection. 
enforcement of fundamental rights of citizens and cases ordered to be transferred from the subordinate courts. The High Courts of Delhi, Calcutta, Bombay and Madras have original jurisdiction in cases of higher value. Next is Appellate Jurisdiction. The High Court has appellate jurisdiction over both criminal and civil matters. Appeals from the judgment and orders of the district court, additional district court or subordinate court lies directly to the High Court. In criminal cases, the jurisdiction extends to cases tried by the sessions and additional sessions judges. An appeal can be filed against the decision of a sessions court if the accused has been sentenced for seven years or more. Capital punishment given by a sessions judge cannot be executed unless it is confirmed by the High Court and appeals from the decisions of the administrative and other tribunals lie to the division bench of the State High Court. Writ Jurisdiction Article 226 empowers the High Court is to issue writs including habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari and quo warranto. The High Court can issue writs to any person, authority and government even outside its territorial jurisdiction if the cause of action arises within its territorial jurisdiction. The writ jurisdiction of the High Court is wider than that of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court can issue writ only for the enforcement of fundamental rights and not only for any other purpose. Whereas the High Court can issue writ for the enforcement of the fundamental right as well as for any ordinary law. Supervisory Jurisdiction The High Court under Article 227 have the power of superintendence over all the courts and tribunals except those which deals with armed forces located in the state. The High Court has the power to call for return from such courts, make and issue general rules and prescribe forms for regulating the practices and proceedings of such courts and prescribe forms in which books, entries and accounts shall be kept by the officers of any such courts. The supervisory jurisdiction of the High Court is very broad as it extends to all courts and tribunals even if they are not subject to its appellate jurisdiction. It can exercise this power suo motor and not necessarily on the application of a party. And other jurisdiction. The High Court has an administrative control over the subordinate courts in the state. These include, it is consulted by the governor in the matters of appointment, posting and promotion of the district judges. It deals with matters of posting, promotion, grant of leave, transfer and discipline of the members of the judicial service of the state. It can withdraw a case pending in the subordinate court if it involves a substantial question of law that requires the interpretation of the constitution. Its law is binding on all subordinate courts functioning within its territorial jurisdiction. The High Court is also a court of record and its judgments, proceedings and acts are recorded for perpetual memory and testimony. These records also have evidentiary value and cannot be questioned when produced before any court. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, prelims question with reference to Indian judiciary consider the following statements. 1. Any retired judge of the Supreme Court of India can be called back to sit by the Chief Justice of India with prior permission of the President of India. 2. A High Court in India has the power to review its own judgment as the Supreme Court does. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. And now mains question. Compare the writs jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and the High Court. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.